AARP's St. Petersburg office, doing outreach and education, community service and advocacy out of our Tampa Bay area. And so today we are joined by a very special guest, Sonia Kihatha with Q Wellness. Thank you for coming. Uh, she, Sonia is a 28 year US Army veteran and is a trauma informed registered yoga teacher with training in the alignment based Anosara Yoga and additional specialized certifications for Yin Yoga, Warriors at Ease, Wisdom Warrior, and I Rest Yoga Nidra Level One. We're here with Sonia today for her to present overviews of the various forms of yoga she'll be facilitating over the coming weeks to give audiences an idea of what will work best for them. We hope that you'll join us each and every Thursday evening starting at 6 o'clock p.m. for a series of yoga classes beginning with Sonia's chair yoga class that will help you offset the kinks you might be getting from all of those Zoom meetings sitting in front of your computer. If you have questions, please be sure to post them. You may be joining us from Facebook or from YouTube. Post them and we'll be happy to ask Sonia at the end of our session today, uh, which will include some example demonstrations on the various types of yoga practices. And now over to you, Sonia. Thank you, Michelle. Good evening from Eastern Time Zone. Uh, good evening to you and thanks everyone for tuning in and joining us. I want to invite you uh, to consider practicing yoga with us for the next eight weeks. We're going to be offering four, there it is, four styles of yoga, one uh, each week, and then we'll repeat it again. And the four styles are really geared for any body and every body. And I mean that as in your body, your age, your size, your shape your ability, your capability. And that's a lot of why I'm going to demonstrate a little bit. I'll step away from the camera to the other side of the room and illustrate a little bit about what each style of yoga uh, offers to you and why you might want to consider it and, and what you can expect to happen when you're in class with me. It will be uh, live classes, so you'll show up on time. Actually, you wanna show, sign in a few minutes early as we, as we register and let everybody in through the waiting room. Uh, Michelle will be managing that uh, every Thursday with me. And then we get started and it's a full hour, a full hour of, of commitment and enjoyment of sitting and uh, we'll do some lying down, we'll do some standing, we'll do some bending over. So it depends on which style of yoga we're doing that night and what how you can appreciate it um, so I've been a yoga teacher for over a decade about 12 years now I've been a yoga teacher I've been practicing yoga myself for about 30 years I came to yoga after one of my or one of my first my first actually not one of mine but my first army uh, injury my my serious uh, accident that uh, tore my arm and so after its repair and I had cervical spine damage and lower spine uh, damage my orthopedic surgeon and my physical therapist rehabilitative experts suggested that I use yoga as an ongoing mechanism to assist my body in staying functional, in moving, in staying healthy, and to reduce my chronic pain. So I practiced for about a decade or so, I guess maybe about 20 years, and then decided that I would become a yoga teacher myself. And so I uh, received the certification and immediately began continuing my education year after year with specialty certifications specifically for recovery from injury, from surgery, from trauma, uh, for recovery in the aging or in the debilitated body, physical body. It's worked out really interestingly that my undergraduate studies years ago from the University of Chicago was in biology, anatomy, physiology with emphasis in neuroscience because I thought I was going to be a neuroscientist someday, which the army didn't need that. So I wasn't, <laughs> but 
because of my all of my study with brain function uh, and the uh, and the neurosynapses, the mind body connection of yoga has really proven to be a full circle for me in my own journey of starting out as a young adult from college. And now here I am as a retired soldier, an army veteran, an over 50 woman and a yoga teacher to be able to understand and help others with their mind body connections with their uh, physical functions and with the neurological changes that happen as we age and if we have anything like uh, injuries physical injuries but if we begin having uh, arthritis or debilitating functions fibromyalgia or lupus or um, or ra or ms it is even more difficult to get through the day to move or to feel like moving when everything hurts. And there's huge irony, uh, but your rheumatologist would tell you, and your orthopedic specialist would tell you that when the body least feels like moving, when you have some of those underlying conditions or degenerative chronic conditions, you actually need to move. That's when it's most important to move. Our joints and our vertebra, our spine, have, uh, have uh, discs and cartilage that does not receive nutrients from just regular blood flow. So our blood, our circulation, circulatory system helps keep our muscles and our flesh, our soft tissue nourished and healthy. But our harder tissue, our cartilage, our joints, our bones, the blood circulating isn't enough. It actually needs compression. It needs pushing and squeezing and opening and movement. It needs pressure. It needs the body weight. It needs, uh, it needs the folding and the movement that then allows the lymph and the blood system to nourish and to really and to remove the toxins in those areas and so it's up to us especially as we age to move our bodies specifically and purposely uh, so that we can keep our joints healthy so that we can explore our, our range of motion if we don't use uh, body parts we lose their function the atrophy happens and so it's really important to keep wrists and shoulders and knees and hips and ankles and feet, all of those bony places that become even bonier as we age, as we lose the, as we lose the density of our skin and our soft tissue, we have to do the movement and the function to keep going so that we can be sustainable for ourselves so that we can function throughout our day so that it keeps us from falling over. Yoga helps with balance. It helps with uh, clarity of mind, actually. It, it helps remove uh, brain fog. It helps with focus. It helps with uh, cardio uh, function. It helps with pulmonary expression and expansion because there's a lot of deep breathing that happens in yoga. And usually throughout our day, even those of us that are athletic and fit or that stay active, when we're not doing that 30 or 60 minutes of activity, we tend to, as humans, breathe only from our upper lobes and breathe very shallow in our chest throughout the day because that's all we need. But we find that to stay healthy, especially in this era of pulmonary and respiratory infections with viruses that are spreading, we have to explore and expand our full lung capacity. We need to remember every day, at least a few times in the day, to take big, full, deep breaths hold that oxygen, let it exchange, and then release it. So we're gonna practice that here in a couple minutes and I would like you to join me uh, over that. Yoga also helps with relaxation. It helps with stress reduction. It helps improve sleep. It helps with chronic pain and fatigue. Um, there are so many benefits of yoga and I can cite resources and references and I'm sure AARP and their fabulous websites have sources for you and have links that are available that you can research. But even just a simple uh, internet search line of benefits of yoga for seniors 
and you will find all of the reasons why these four classes that AARP Florida is offering in August and September, why all of them are for you and you will benefit. I'm going to move back and do some, some breath work with you and then illustrate the four types of yoga that we're going to be doing. Before I do that, let me check in with the moderator and see if there's anything that we want to exchange or answer right now before I move into the body movement. Michelle, I know as a voice that you're there uh, helping me host this as the representative from AARP Florida. Is there anything that we need to cover before I move back across the room? I think not. Okay. Oh, no, there Michelle, you are. Michelle, you could talk. <laughs> there I am. So, no, we have no questions at this time. Just a lot of people okay. joining us. FaceTime or uh, Facebook and YouTube, and they're really excited to be joining you. They're looking forward to the upcoming session. Uh, so yeah, show us some moves. All right, let's do this. So let me make sure that you can hear me still as I'm across the room. I have my, my headset on. So the first style of yoga that we're gonna present that begins next week actually is chair yoga. And for chair yoga, I would like you to have a chair with no wheels. So even a folding chair works or a kitchen chair, dining chair. And then if you could have a yoga block, a foam yoga block, they're very easy to purchase. Uh, even online, they can come to you uh, by next week. A foam yoga block will be very, very helpful. If you don't have one, uh, and can't get one or don't want to, please come ready with a full roll of toilet paper because we will practice having that spacer between our legs and a full roll of toilet paper will do the same, will do the same thing. The other piece of equipment that I would like you to have for chair yoga is a folded blanket, a sturdy blanket, not a squishy, soft, fluffy blanket, but a nice sturdy blanket. I like cotton um, or a nice sturdy bath towel or beach towel, because there are occasions when we actually need to raise our hips higher on the chair. And then the last item to bring to class for chair yoga is a dish towel. I used to use a strap, a yoga strap, and it feels like a belt. And if you have that and it works for you, that's perfect. I find as I've aged and because I have arthritis uh, and I have injuries that I like the, the density, the softness and the grip of having the dish towel instead of the skinny, thin, hard, uh, firm belt that is flat and that can, it, it hurts a little more. So I like dish towels. I love dish towels for working. Uh, we use it for working shoulder and arm and wrist and for reaching uh, farther than our body parts can reach that day. So let's start out with doing some breath work. Before I demonstrate chair yoga, I'd like to demonstrate a breath that I call three stage breath. And it is a fabulous breath. It's the best breath work, pranayama, that, uh, that helps you expand and increase your, your volume, your lung capacity. So it's called three stages because we're gonna breathe in in three, three levels, like thirds. Breathe in and fill the belly. And so as you breathe in, and you allow the belly to get soft and expand. That's the lower lobes right here at the bottom of the ribs, the lower lobes of the lungs. It feels like it's the belly. Keep breathing into the chest until the ribs expand. And then keep breathing, sip, sip, sniff, up into your throat. Those are the bronchioles. And then pause just for a few heartbeats and allow that oxygenation to take place. Then lean forward, purse your lips and blow out like candles and use your strong diaphragm, use your belly to push that old air out. You wanna breathe out everything so that you have nothing left. Let's do this a few times. Your pace, your breath, I'm talking so my, my timing will be different than yours. Breathe into the belly, keep breathing into the chest, feel the ribs expand, keep breathing, sniff, sip, sip up into the throat, Hold it just for a heartbeat or two or three, only as you're comfortable, and then lean forward and blow. Whoosh. And get skinny, get dense, get tight, get it all out. Do it again. Into the belly, into the chest. Feel the ribs, feel the throat. Pause 
and then blow it all out. This kind of breath is a lot of work and it takes effort. And that's because it actually forces us to explore and expand all the edges of the four lobes of the lungs. Because if we don't walk the periphery of the yard, if we don't check the perimeter, if we don't clean those baseboards, if we don't weed the edges, it gets taken over. It gets taken over by brambles and weeds and dust and uh, all the parts and pieces that collect on the edges. And then we find that we're only using the center, which is not our full capacity. And when we have stickiness on the edges of our lungs, it leads to being sick. It opens us up to being more susceptible to getting, uh, getting sick. So big, deep breathing like this, even if you were only to do that breath, say five big, deep breaths like that, if you did that every morning and every afternoon, it would be so healthy for your pulmonary and respiratory uh, sense. It would be, oh, it would be just marvelous. So that would be my gift. My request of you is, if nothing else from this presentation, please take some big full breaths and help your body help itself. Now, let's use a little bit of chair yoga. Let me give you an idea of what chair yoga would be. Chair yoga has us sitting on the front portion of our chair seat. And we're going to talk a lot about alignment so that we stack our bones, like stacking blocks, wooden blocks, so that ergonomically, in engineering the, the mechanics of the body, biomechanically, we are lined up. I'll use the block in my case, or if you have a full roll of toilet paper, you'll place it in between your knees for just a little prompt, a reminder, so that we can squeeze the legs into the midline and engage the full muscles of the, of the body. And then we'll do some spinal work. This class is all about spinal health and core strength and range of motion mobility. So the spine moves in a long extension. I don't know if you can see it in my hand. Where's the, there we go, a long extension. So you extend the spine long and it curls. So long extension is when it's a long, long spine and we're stretching it and reaching it. And then the flexion is when we curl and tuck and roll. That's very, very important for you to do because it moves the pelvis back and forth and it moves the vertebra and it allows for that flushing of the system, the synovial fluid that keeps us healthy and that keeps all of our discs healthy because discs either bulge or herniate or deteriorate and we want to keep them healthy. We want to keep them flushed and working. So we'll also work on core abdominal work and it includes things like spinal twists where we're using the entire inner line of the strong muscle chain in order to move our torso with respect to our feet. We'll also use arms a lot overhead and behind because this is what we need for functional fitness, reaching things on shelves, being able to lift and remove, to put and to place. And because it isn't unless we use this full range of motion that we can maintain this full range of motion. And that's very, very important. Please join me for chair yoga. Whether you sit all day in a chair or whether you uh, your lifestyle right now doesn't have you at a desk, this yoga class will be for you. It includes some standing work. It includes some bending. And of course, we'll use the dish towel to do some shoulder mobility and strengthening. And I look forward to seeing you for chair yoga. The second step version of yoga is called hatha. Hatha is the form of yoga that most people think of at yoga studios or posters and commercials. And it is the standing, sitting, bending type of yoga that is muscularly more active. And so Hatha yoga includes reaching up overhead and bending all the way over. Hatha yoga includes making strong standing motions with the legs, using our full body to experience muscular connection, to be able to hold and stay in place to increase muscular strength, 
to also work on balance and coordination as we bend and reach and move the body. I will provide the cueing. I will demonstrate visually and I will give the words to allow for you to have modifications. For example, if you have uh, high blood pressure or you've had heart disease or heart surgery, bending all the way over like this is not good. Head below heart is not good for you. But you could bend halfway like this, where your head and heart are in the same line and it's still healthy for you. It's still really good for your hips. It's still a good class for you to come to. We will spend some time in plank pose. You don't have to have full legs extended if you don't like. You can have knees down. And so as we lower our bodies up and down from the floor, you can choose if you want to be supported or if you want long leg. What's wonderful about Hatha Yoga is that it truly is for everybody, but it's a full body workout. We will huff and puff in Hatha Yoga. <laughs> we will break a sweat. Well, we will huff and puff in chair yoga too. We will break a sweat in chair yoga. It is, uh, it is active. It is strong because it requires us, even sitting in a chair, I'm going to ask you to use all the muscles you can to hold to your capacity to extend and expand in your, in your capability because that's how we grow. That's how we get better. That's how we get stronger. That's how our body responds and keeps us fit. We have to work harder as we age to maintain the level of fitness. We don't have a buffer anymore like we did in our 30s and 40s. We have to take more time and devote uh, more effort to taking care of this wonderful piece of equipment called the human body. It requires more maintenance, more service, more attention, just to maintain where we are, much less improve or increase uh, from where we've been. So the, these classes, these two classes, chair and hatha, will be some heart rate, some uh, breathing, some huffing and puffing, some moving, some density, and, and some, some effort. It will be work. Both of those classes will be work. And I look forward to having you join me because I think it's more fun. There'll be lots of laughs. <laughs> I tend to find it very funny when my body doesn't do something that I used to or that my brain thinks I can. So uh, come and be entertained uh, and get something for it. The other two styles of yoga that I'll be presenting are calm. They are not effort. Well, they are effort. They are not huffing and puffing. So yin, uh, yin yoga, Y-I-N, yin yoga is a uh, slow relaxation. It's a long, deep stretch. Yin yoga requires sitting and lying on the floor. Oh, I did not specify for hatha yoga when we're actively movement moving, you will want two blocks and the folded blanket and the dish towel and a sticky mat, what's called a yoga mat, uh, also sometimes called a sticky athletic mat because carpeting on the floor, you can slide and we don't want that. Going, moving into the splits unintentionally is not a good, not a good idea. It's, it's not fun. So have a nice sticky mat so that your feet stay planted and your hands stay planted. If we're doing inversion, downward facing dog, we don't want to be slipping and sliding on hardwood floors or on carpeted floors. So please, please have a, a yoga sticky mat for Hatha yoga. We definitely need it. For yin yoga, you don't need a mat. You could just have a blanket or carpet or rug on the floor. I like to sit on a folded blanket. I'm going to ask you to sit on one, two, or folded towel. So bring that with you to yin class. And you'll want one block or that roll of toilet paper, but definitely something that you can support or lean on. Yin yoga is going to have a lot of long, slow holds. So we'll move our body, we'll position the bones of our body, and then we will hang out and we'll hang out in the poses for anywhere from two to three minutes ish because in the slow tension in the pulling the constant 
slight edge of the of holding a position it pulls on the fascia the connective tissue and it pulls on the joints just enough that it allows the flushing and it is the flushing that keeps us healthy so we have to use we have to use kinetic energy movement right we have to use physical energy to generate that organic energy that keeps us healthy that organic energy of the immune system and we do this by staying in a pose for a while so that was a seated forward bend sometimes we'll go sideways for a while and hold a body part and hang out for a few minutes so that you can feel the tension feel the slight discomfort we don't go into pain but we find the edge of our comfort zone the edge of our ability the edge of our range of motion and then we stay there and breathe it probably doesn't sound very appealing but it's actually a very soothing style it's a lovely class we did a couple of them in july june uh, no i guess yes uh june and july or may and june and uh and the reviews were very well regarded so please give yin a try you don't have to have any yoga experience whatsoever you don't even have to own spandex or yoga clothes well you don't for any of my classes actually but yin completely is a come as you are so is chair you can come in your work clothes business casual kick off your shoes and get down and then join me in these yoga poses this is yin we spend a lot of time seated and then we will lie down yin poses include lying on the floor and bringing your knees in or letting the knees splay and staying in it for a while or bending to one side and staying in it for a while the yin class is really lovely for anyone with uh, arthritis or ms so please come try yin yoga class the fourth style of yoga that we're offering this time is new to people who if you joined us in may and june you didn't experience this and so we're very excited to be bringing i rest yoga nidra i rest yoga nidra is a form of yoga nidra at the i rest integrative restoration institute founded by dr richard miller has conducted all of the evidence-based scientific research that proves with brain mapping the effects of guided meditation and relaxation for sleep uh sleep issues for pain issues for trauma for anxiety uh, so an hour of I rest yoga nidra with me is delicious. It's the hot fudge of a hot fudge Sunday. If that's your thing, if that's not your thing, then we'll have to come up with something else. It's the cinnamon right on top of your, uh, on top of your latte. So what you need for I rest yoga nidra is different from all the other classes for I rest yoga nidra. You will lie down as comfortably as possible. And it might not be the floor. If that's not comfortable for you, there are ways to help. So when I have students come to class or when I teach in, when I used to teach in studios, when we could, we would bring cushions, sofa cushions and bed pillows or uh, toss pillows from chairs and sofas because you will lie down on your back and you want your forehead a little higher than your chin and you want to be as comfortable as possible. And then you lie back and listen to my words and your whole focus, your work is to follow, the, follow along in your mind, follow along in your body, in your somatic experience, as I guide you and lead you through an assessment of how your body is functioning, what your senses are doing, and how to calm the brain. It's fabulous. 
most people fall asleep and you're supposed to. It's absolutely okay to fall asleep during I rest yoga nidra. If we were in a studio class together, I often tell everyone that if you fall asleep quietly, I leave you be. If you fall asleep noisily and the snoring begins to be heard, I will come up and touch your foot gently so that you can go back to being a quiet, a quiet participant instead of a snoring participant. There are studies that show that even having fallen asleep, as long as you have your audio on or your earbuds in and you can still hear my voice, your brain benefits uh, and your body benefits, your anxiety, your sleep, uh, struggles, your pain, benefits from going through an I rest yoga nidra session. It is fabulous. So please join me for that and give it a try. Um, and I think we're up of time. This is our 30 minutes. And so now we want space and time for exchange for some Q question and answer, some Q and A. <gasps> Sonia, that was awesome. I know that I've been following the comments on YouTube and Facebook, and we've got a lot of folks who have been in your virtual classes in the past. They're really looking forward to coming back. We do have one question uh, from someone who is brand new to this. Um, and so the question is, I'm new to yoga. Is this series the right fit for me? I think so. I say yes. Um, and But that's because that's my specialty. Uh, as a yoga teacher and as a biomechanics therapeutic, biomechanics specialist, my, my expertise is in guiding any body into a, a position or into a pose and to ask you to gauge your own feedback. What is working for your body and what isn't? I provide always modifications and options. Your yoga will never look like my yoga or anyone else's, and it's not supposed to. We don't need to look like the posters uh, uh, on those uh, on those beautiful people at the other at the other places. We want to experience yoga that works for us. So this is us considering our body and honoring our limitations and understanding what works for us today. Maybe it worked last week, but it doesn't work today. Maybe we want it to work for us because it used to, or that's our goal. But if it doesn't work for us today, then we need to put ego aside and be real. This is us being honest and showing up for ourselves and taking care of who we have, what we have today. This vessel, this chalice of our soul requires attention. And so we have to be real with it. We can't pretend that we uh, have abilities that we don't. And so let's honor that. And then we can heal and grow and expand. Wonderful. Now, I know that uh, when you were in the Army, you sustained some injuries. Uh, any recommendations that you would have for anyone else who may be suffering from injuries but are also interested in yes. exploring yoga? You will absolutely want props. Props are the word we use for meaning equipment, additional equipment in the yoga. I also refer to them as toys. And we all know that life's more fun with toys. And the more toys, the better. When you have injuries, we have, to, uh, we have to have the additional pieces of equipment that allow us to experience or explore or support uh, a, a body position if our own bones or muscles can't, can't do it for us or if we're not there yet. So uh, definitely you're going to want a blanket or a towel or two. Definitely you're going to want two foam blocks. Rolls of toilet paper have limitations. So go with the foam blocks if you have injuries. You'll definitely want the uh, dish towel. Um, I like dish towel instead of bath towel. Uh, bath towel. I mean, uh, hand towel, they can be too thick. And so you still want it thin enough that we can pull it apart. We're going to do a lot of feeling into our muscle team uh, operating together. Complex muscle chain actions. I refer in my with my private clients because I do a lot of video one on one custom therapeutic biomechanics with my clients. I've done that for years. So with my private client sessions and in my studio group classes, I will refer to our body parts as our teammates. If our body is the team, we have all these little players and our brain is kind of the coach. But we have for many years, often, usually we rely on those same 
uh, superheroes of the team, you know, the, the glory, the glory boys, the glory kids, girls and, and boys of our team, because they're the superstar. They're the A team. They're, their names are on the roster and we use them over and over and over again. And they get good at it. They'll do it. But they also get tired and exhausted and worn out. And we then have lost the sense of all the other teammates that we've got, all the other players on the roster. We've got a C team and a, a, and a B team that we don't even ask to get off the bench sometimes. And then we wonder why we can't use our whole body and move as we need to move as a complex organism. And that's because we haven't been asking them. And if they don't get asked, they don't get used. And if they don't get used, atrophy happens, right? And so they don't even bother dress suiting up anymore. I don't think they even come to the bench. They don't come to practice anymore because we haven't been using them for so long that they've given up. They just don't even come. And so in my classes, we're going to move slowly enough and stay in the poses long enough that we can call on those players to get off the bench and to join in and help out because bicep doesn't need to be doing everything. And trap, trap takes over a lot. An upper trap does a whole lot of work that it doesn't need to be doing when we need to be calling on rhomboids, right? And we need to be calling on uh, Terry's minor and major and infraspinatus and supraspinatus. We need all these teammates that you don't even know their names and that's okay, you don't have to. But we need to get them off the bench and stop causing injury to ourselves by doing a repeated action with the same five favorites and they're, they're worn out. That's wonderful. And, and that's why I love that you're going to offer to us four different types of yoga. So one, we're not going to get bored. We're going to be working out every kind of muscle throughout our whole body. We're going to feel it the next day, but not in a bad way, in a good way, right. in places that we didn't know even existed. Um, so for the folks who are like me and spend so much time, especially these days, sitting in front of a computer, what yoga would you recommend for people who spend way too much time sitting down? Mm. Well, first I would tell you that we have to wash our hands a lot these days and we have to wash our hands for 20 seconds. So you could do 20 squats while you're washing your hands. You could, you could do 20 squats. You could do 20 side while you're washing your hands. So I'm washing my hands and I'm moving from side to side. Or you could play around with balance and lift one knee up for 10 and then lift the other knee up for another 10. And all of that is yoga, mobile yoga, 20 second yoga workouts. And you can do them all day long every time you wash your hands. How can the other it? piece though? <laughs> Right? Isn't that fabulous? I've been doing it now for a couple months and I love it. Yay! Especially because I sit at the desk a lot right now because all my clients are online. It used to be that just some of my clients were online and I would get to play with people in person. I don't get to play with anybody in person anymore. So I sit a lot at my desk and look at a screen. So I need to, I have to tell myself, I have alarms. I have little timers that go off on my phone throughout the day. Every couple of hours, a little timer will go up that says, get up and move. And so so I'll tell you a lot of our basics that we're going to do, especially in the Hatha yoga class and the chair yoga class, we're going to focus on spinal health and hips, right? So your low back, your pelvis, your low back and your spine gets compressed when we sit in these chairs all day long. Desk chairs don't help us. Sofas and couches don't help us. Overstuffed, really comfortable recliners don't help us. Our spine needs to be, I don't know if I was going to do this. Our spine needs to be upright. Anyway, we need to sit like this, long spine. We need to sit long spine. When we sit in those comfy chairs, we do this. And that's what lends to this forward slumping slouching. And when we do a lot of this, as we age especially, our bone density changes and so does our muscular density. Even when we're active, our density changes of all of our tissues. It's a molecular, it just is. But my, my biology background would tell you, it just happens. So we have to do more to open up. We have to do more effort to sit up tall, to sit up straight. The spine moves in six directions, six directions. It moves uh, forward and rounds back. It moves from side to side, right? So if we're reaching over and moving from side to side, and it rotates, it twists from side to side. 
we have to explore that full range of motion, all six directions of the spine every day. You should do it every day for the best spinal health. And then we can even talk about abs and core work if you'd like to. Is there another question or you want me to keep going on this one? <laughs> that's that's wonderful. I think that people really enjoy the little tips, the little things that we can do to really make a difference throughout the day. I know um, that people have really busy schedules. They may be caregivers or they're working, um, they are volunteering, they've got hobbies. And so they're looking for those little tips. Where can I sneak in yoga here and there to really help my mind and body? And so we love those tips. So if you have some more tips to share with us, that would be fantastic. Okay. Yeah. So let me move back a little bit. I'm going to move back here. Let me grab the chair. Can you see me? Where am I? Okay. So uh, a lot of us have back pain, low back pain or our hips, right? Our hips are stuck or they don't move like they used to. But a lot of that is because we've been sitting in this direction or we walk in this direction or we run in this direction or we cycle in this direction or we drive in this direction or we sit and read or type in this direction. Do you notice the direction of my body? My body's been in the same direction. This is called the sagittal line. We do everything in the same line. So come to yoga class so that we can go in this direction. We need to open up the hips. We need to twist and turn. We need to go from side to side. We need to move the hips forward and back, anterior and posterior, tucking that tailbone, rounding, and then extending, showing off the back pockets and reaching down deep to get a long, long straight spine or sloping spine. It's not straight, it's long extended spine, I'll call it. And this, can you see this long extended spine? We need to move our shoulder blades. We do a lot of this reaching forward. So see what happens, can you see? See what happens when I round, when I round and slump, here are my shoulder blades and here are my shoulder, my arms in my shoulder socket. But if I were to raise my ribs, and squeeze my shoulder blades, then just by standing like this, which is not the same as military attention, but it's just bringing the shoulders into the socket where they need to be and flattening the shoulder blades behind us where they are normally, that's the anatomical position of the shoulder blades, instead of this roundedness that exhausts, it exhausts our upper back. That's why our upper back aches because it's exhausted from being pulled apart we need to help open up this clavicle, open up the chest, help that upper back. When the low back hurts, it's often because its counterpart, the teammate, is the belly, the abs. Some people call it the core, but the core has a whole lot more to it. But the front side of the low back is the belly, the intestines. That's the front side of the low back. When we don't help, when we don't use our abdominal wall and our strong core piece to help in, in standing, to, right, to, to push down, to brace, to push down when we stand up, if we're a caretaker or if we're a volunteer and we're doing lifting, bending and lifting, we need to use strong legs with a really extended spine. See the spine long? I'm not curving. Long spine spends really push down and use the biomechanics of the body to be safe in lifting, in heaving, in holding, in transferring. Strong core is really critical to strong or healthy or pain less back, pain free back. These two companions are like our defensive and offensive line. We don't use this a lot. Often we don't use it as much as we might think. And the back ends up having to be both offensive and defensive, which means it never gets a break. It is on the field nonstop and it gets exhausted. And at one point it goes on strike. That's called seizing and it doesn't work. It's no bueno, mm -mm. it hurts a lot. So save yourself, help yourself and come to class. One last question from you for you, and this one's from Debbie on Facebook. Um, so is there a specific pose or a specific class you would recommend um, to activate the lymphatic system? Oh, there are lots. Uh, I don't know that there's one in particular, but right now, my favorite that is very popular because of right, we need T cells, T, T cells for our immune system, and that comes from the thymus. So thymus thumping is something we will do in class. And you just take a soft fist and, and 
go across your sternum as if we were doing the ah, uh, and go across and then go all the way across to the other side where that arm can reach and around and up. And to get the lymph node, you're gonna lymph, lift that arm and get just gently, just underneath and then switch. So now we're doing that center part again and then across to the other side, up and then underneath, get the lymph, uh, lymph nodes and then the thymus, mm, it's good stuff. Everything you want to do it for, you want to do it for at least two minutes. Two minutes is really key for making changes in our, in our, uh, in our body, in our cellular system. And Beatrice um, also had a question she asked earlier. I know that AARP is going to offer, and with your help, um, Thursday evening every uh, 6 o'clock p.m. every Thursday evening. Uh, Sonia will be joining us to facilitate yoga. How often should someone do yoga sessions per week? Uh, well, there's a lot that goes into that uh, because there's a lot of different types of yoga. I would say that your body needs caretaking every day. You choose how that caretaking takes place. Uh, cardio is a type of caretaking, right? So that's the cardiopulmonary function, but it isn't necessarily range of motion or spinal health or abdominal uh, work to help the spinal health. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily help joints, uh, body weight or weightlifting, weight strength training is and isometrics. That's another lovely way to help your body and do its caretaking. That will help with functional fitness. That will certainly help with bone density. That will help with muscular density too, that to help those that tissue going. So if you're already doing some cardio, and you're already doing regular weight training of any kind, then I would say yoga three times, four times a week would be really good. But there's another part of me that says, wow, you could even just do 15 or 20 minutes of something and that's yoga uh, and that's daily. Fantastic. And and just so you know, AARP Florida is offering uh, fitness classes, a whole series, 9 a.m. Uh, that's going to be streamed live from AARP Florida's Facebook page. So you'll get a little bit of everything from yoga to Tai Chi to stretching, weight training, a little bit of everything. And so we have the the whole spectrum there, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced, um, we invite everyone. So we've got a little bit of everything. Uh, so I know we're we're running low on time right now, and I think that we've we've gone through all of the questions uh, that I've seen on YouTube and Facebook. A lot of comments, Sonia. Just so you know, people are really excited about the upcoming series, and so um, I will share with everyone, um, both on YouTube and Facebook, through the comments. I'll share the registration link just in case you missed that. Again, it's going to be every Thursday evening, 6 o'clock p.m. live with Sonia, and that'll be through the Zoom platform. And we'll make sure to, that anyone who registers will be able to get that link and join live. And we'll also have recordings of that. In fact, if you joined us late for uh, today's live streaming, this is being recorded right now and it will be available through AARP Florida's uh, YouTube or virtual library, which will be on YouTube. And we'll be happy to share that link with everyone as well. Any last words for, for our, our guests today, Sonia? Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate having this opportunity to share what I know and I hope you're inspired to try it. So the challenge would be that people who've tuned in because they already do yoga or they were already interested or they'd already said, I'm ready. Um, I would give you the additional piece of, of challenge or inspiration to bring a friend or family member. I say bring knowing it's not in person, right? But invite and share and inspire a friend or family member who has absolutely decided that yoga is not for them because that's where the magic happens. It does. So beginners and everyone alike, thank you again for joining us. We look forward to seeing you on Thursday evenings. Thanks everyone.